Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, the show that takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello, everybody. How is it going today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. I hope you're feeling good and positive and just having a good day because does it sound like it? Because I'm having a good day. <laughs> the sun is shining. I feel rejuvenated and excited about life recently. Like, I, well, I'm always pretty excited about life, but I just feel extra excited right now. And <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm super happy to be here and to be sharing more valuable information with you on how to live your life to the happiest and the fullest so that we can all be excited for life and we can make the most out of the beautiful, crazy lives that we get to live. I know there has been so much negativity and pain and hardships this year. Um, 2020 has been wow. (laughs) 2020 has been wow. And I'm, but I'm super glad that I get to come here. I get to talk to you and give you guys tips on how to make your life what you want. You know, this is all about creating the life that you want to live. And there's so much that goes into life and happiness you know when you think of life and happiness like there's just so many different categories there's so many different things to talk about and there's so many different things that come into play when it comes to your life and your happiness when it comes to creating that life that you want to live and making the most out of every single day because life is short and if there's anything that I, I learned in 2020 is that we really really do need to cherish um, the things that we care about the most. We need to be grateful for the things that we have. We need to be strong and independent. And, you know, we really just need to spread kindness and be there for other people and be there for ourselves and be our own best friends and, and find that happiness within ourselves and nowhere else. And so I am rambling on, but I just love being able to come on here and talk about so many wide range subjects because everything just comes into play when we talk about happiness. So today's episode, um, I decided I wanted to talk about something that has really affected me throughout my entire life. Um, it's definitely played a role I know in a lot of people's lives. Everybody, everybody's life is affected by food. Okay. So today we're talking about food, particularly we're talking about food cravings and we all get those chocolate cravings. We all get those sweets cravings or those carb cravings or things like that. It's inevitable. It happens. Um, so today I thought I would talk about it because there is actually a very strong connection with food cravings and mental health. And I have done episodes about food and mental health because what we fuel our bodies with is so, so important. And so we've talked about how that does play such a substantial role in our mental health and our overall well-being because our brain is always on, right? Our brain is always functioning, whether you're sleeping, it doesn't even matter. Your brain is on, you are functioning, okay? And It takes care of our thoughts, right? It takes care of our movements. It takes care of your breathing, your heartbeat, your senses, right? Everything. And it works hard 24-7, even while we're asleep, okay? And so this means that our brain requires a constant supply of fuel. Have you ever felt just like so drained and so tired and your body's just so, you feel like lethargic? And you eat a good, powerful, nutrient-dense meal and you energize yourself, right? We're fueling our bodies so that we can move and have energy to do things. It's the same thing for our brains. We need to make sure that we are fueling our brains and our bodies properly so that they can function at the high intensity that they need to. Our brain is always, always on. So that fuel 
chemical that we need to do for our brain comes from the foods that we eat. And what's in the fuel makes all the difference of how your brain is functioning. And simply what you eat directly affects the structure and function of your brain. And then ultimately that affects your mood and it's affecting your mental health, right? It's affecting everything that's going on in your head. And so a food craving is defined as an intense desire for a specific food, right? So most people experience cravings at one time or another, maybe all the time, maybe certain times of the day, certain times of the week. And of course, there are many factors that determine the frequency and intensity of food cravings. Um, hormones like menstrual cycles for women, um, um, emotion, like emotional eating is a huge thing. Emotional cravings is a huge thing, which I am going to be talking about that today. Um, and there, I'm going to be talking about common causes of food cravings that are directed to our mental health. I'm going to be talking about the close, um, combination between depression and cravings. Um, I'm going to talk about the serotonin, uh, theory. I'm going to talk about some other, um, things in our brains that play such a important role when it comes to food. I'm going to talk about chocolate cravings and then of course I am going to jump into coping with our food cravings that are related to our mental health I'll give you lots of tips and tricks and things that you can do to try to get those um in control because you know food cravings don't just affect our bodies it doesn't just make us you know if we have if we always give into say our like our sweet food cravings you might get worried about gaining weight or not having that dream body that you like right because you're eating all these different foods but there's so much more than just gaining weight to food cravings there's so much more um that we need to make sure we are aware of um, and I feel like it's not talked about a lot when we, when we talk about food, we automatically usually associate it to our bodies and our weights instead of actually associating it to our mental health and to the way that our brain is functioning. So let's talk about food today. Let's talk about food cravings. I, first of all, I get food cravings constantly. I'm a big carb eater. I'm a big sweet eater. Like I love love my sweets. I love my chocolates. I love my bagels, carbs, bread, mm, like I love that stuff. So I know this firsthand and I get cravings constantly and it's because I've always struggled with finding the right relationship with food, I guess I should say. And so I've always struggled with that. And But no matter whether I feel like I'm on track with my relationship with food or I feel maybe a little bit off track sometimes, um, no matter how on track or if I'm on a diet or anything like that, I will always have my cravings. And it took me a long time to realize it's not just my body telling me, mm, I want chocolate. It's my brain telling me that for a certain reason. And it all plays in a role. Depression and food cravings is a huge, huge thing. So we're going to get into it. I got lots, lots to share, lots of good tips, lots of things of how you can live your life to the fullest and the happiest. So with that being said, what are some of the common causes of food cravings? And the first culprit is emotional eating. So stress eating. So both cravings and emotional eating reflect a strong desire. Um, but with a craving, the object of desire is the specific food, right? So you want something very particular. Um, and a different food isn't going to do the trick, right? Like if you want, if you're craving something, there is nothing else you want. That is it. You're not going to feel satisfied or fulfilled if you get something else, right? So the point of emotional eating is a, is simply the act of eating, actually, and whether to burn your nervous energy, to soothe yourself, to calm yourself down a little bit, um, to stuff a feeling of emptiness. That's how a lot of people kind of function with emotional eating. Basically, a specific food might be preferred, but with emotional eating, usually any food will do. Um, but, you know, there are emotional like cravings where maybe every single time that you feel really really upset you feel really sad you crave chocolate you know there's like that stereotype like stereotypical thing where it's like oh I broke up with my boyfriend I have to eat a tub of ice cream like it's like it's stereotypical but like it's true how many times have you eaten a tub of ice cream when you've been upset whether a breakup or anything else in life it's like mm, yeah I could go for a tub of ice cream it just works it just is what it is and so we tend to really um, dive into those foods that we don't usually let ourselves indulge in all the time um, when we are emotional. And so when we are suffering from stronger um, emotional feelings, so those negative feelings, like maybe not even quite depression, but getting into those really dark 
emotional negative feelings. Um, food is a comfort source for a lot of people. And so if you find that you are always craving a certain food when you are feeling down, that is like your trigger point. That is, that is kind of something that, that triggers you. And so it may feel like it's, it's helping you in the moment, um, because it's comforting, right? But in the long run, you are actually just kind of feeding in to that craving, feeding in to that negative emotion instead of dealing with it, right? So emotional eating, biggest culprit, the biggest deal. The next thing is just boredom as well. And I know this, I guess, technically doesn't have to do with mental health, but I find that if you are feeling really down or you're feeling off or something like that, um, boredom, like, you're you're doing nothing right like you might not have the energy to do anything so you're laying in bed and you're watching movies or tv or whatever and it's that boredom of netflix asking you if you're still there for the 10th time that day and you're feeling you're filling that void of boredom with food okay and so this kind of all plays in a role with your mental health as well um as well as just like deprivation like I find too that when we are trying to suppress our feelings or if you're feeling really anxious like a lot of people when they're stressed out do not eat I am the opposite I'm definitely an emotional eater if I feel stressed out or I feel any kind of negative emotion I love to eat food like that's that's my thing whether I crave something or it's just food in general um where other people kind of deprive themselves from food um when they're feeling emotional or when they're feeling anxious so that's another thing where um if you're depriving yourself for so long of certain foods or food in general because of your mental health problems, you are going to gain a craving then. So you're going to start craving those sweets, those carbs, those things that you maybe don't normally allow yourself to eat. And this is all because you deprived yourself of food, but because of your mental health, right? Because of your anxiety, um, because maybe maybe you have really bad OCD That's you are a little freaked out by certain foods. You're very particular with things. All this comes into play, okay? So it's time for a little bit of a break, but when we get back, I'm going to jump right into depression and cravings. We're going to talk about serotonin, the theory. I do have um, a little bit of a study to to share with you, some research that I, I can't wait to share. We're going to talk about chocolate cravings, and then of course, like always, I will talk about coping with those food cravings to do with your mental health. So lots of good information to share with you today. Do not go anywhere. I will be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Hello, hello. We are back. My name's Alyssa Joe. In case you forgot, or if you're just tuning in for some reason, we are talking all about food cravings and mental health. Yes, there is a combination. They are strongly related to each other, believe it or not. You're not just craving sugary sweets or carbohydrates because of your body. You're craving it because of your brain, I bet, 90% of the reason. So let's talk about it a little bit more and how much this affects us. So we went through the causes of why this could be happening. Of course, there's emotional eating, there's deprivation, um, our boredom from our mental health problems as well. All those things play a factor. But now let's talk about the close relation between depression and cravings, okay? So... Food plays a very significant role in many events throughout our lives, right? Okay, so birthdays, um, holidays, weddings, um, just every day we're eating, but big events, like food is usually associated to something positive. So by partaking excessively in your favorite food, 
people who are depressed may be subconsciously attempting to recreate those positive feelings. Weird way to think about it, right? But it's true because think about it like when you think of a certain food, um, like let's say like you're thinking of a certain cake and maybe it's the cake that you had on your wedding day. So every single time you have that vanilla custard cake, it reminds you of those positive feelings you had on your wedding day. So when you are depressed and you are eating a lot of food, you might go to that cake because you want subconsciously you're trying to associate those positive feelings into your life again. Or maybe every single birthday you have tacos as your birthday meal. So maybe when you are feeling really down, you're craving tacos because (laughs) that's your birthday meal that's associated to a positive emotion. And then it's also for people who are depressed, it's also compensating for low energy. So whether it's due to a lack of sleep when you're depressed or there's like the general sense of feeling lethargic when you are going through depression and, and struggling with your mental health. Um, basically depression disorder, it depletes your energy, right? Like you just do not feel like you have energy for life, right? That's why you're feeling so low. And so a natural reaction to feelings of like lethargy is to eat more food to fuel a tired body, right? Like I mentioned in the beginning of today's episode, have you ever just felt super, super tired, but you need to like go for a workout or something? So of course you're going to fuel yourself with some nutrient dense food that's going to give you energy, right? And so we feel like we're fueling ourselves for our body so that we have the energy to move around for our workout or whatever they we're doing but it's also for our brains as well okay so those are just kind of two points of why depression and cravings are so closely related but now I want to talk about the serotonin theory okay and so one theory about food cravings involves serotonin And we know that serotonin is a neurotransmitter that's needed for mood regulation, right? And so researchers believe that having an imbalance of serotonin in the brain strongly contributes to the development of depression. We've talked about this last before. So since about 95% of our serotonin is actually produced in our gastrointestinal tract, um, and that tract is actually lined with 100 million nerve cells or neurons, it basically makes sense that the inner workings of our digestive system um, don't just help you digest food, um, but also guides your emotions as well. So Basically, the function of these neurons and the production of neurotransmitters like serotonin is highly influenced by the billions of good bacteria that make up our intestinal microbiome. So these bacteria play a very essential role in our overall health. Um, they protect the lining of our intestines and they ensure basically that they provide a strong barrier against toxins or bad bacteria. Um, They limit inflammation. They improve how well you absorb nutrients from your food. And they activate neural pathways that travel directly between the gut and the brain. Okay, so when you're craving carbs, you're usually being drawn to foods that encourage serotonin production. So basically, in a sense, you're reaching for sugary, carbohydrate-rich foods can be a way of self-medicating your depression. It's crazy how this works, right? How strongly, like, connected it is. And research seems to actually really support this theory, meaning that having a meal high in carbohydrates tends to raise the levels of serotonin, while a high-fat, high-protein meal meal may actually reduce them, okay? So the effect of carb cravings on low mood may be stronger when people eat food with a high um, glycemic in- index, so like such as like candy and stuff, as these cause a higher peak in blood sugar levels, okay? Crazy, right? So now I want to talk about the role of tryptophan. So tryptophan is a amino acid, um, which is a precursor of serotonin. Okay, so that means that your body needs tryptophan to make serotonin, okay? So tryptophan may also produce a calming effect through interactions that take place within the realm of the gut-brain access, right? And so several studies have proposed that low levels of tryptophan can increase hunger and drive your food cravings, as well as contribute to symptoms of depression. So a diet with plenty of high tryptophan foods may be helpful in boosting your mood and managing your cravings. 
So we're, <laughs> you're like, I've never even heard of tryptophan. Where am I going to, how is tryptophan on the back of my food bottle? <laughs> like tryptophan is actually naturally found in protein rich foods. So seafood, eggs, um, poultry, um, and then it can also be taken in a form of a supplement. I don't know, you may have seen it at like a pharmacy, a drugstore, and you can take it in a form of supplement, but I do suggest, of course, talking to your doctor before you start taking tryptophan. But chocolate cravings, now I want to talk about chocolate cravings, which I feel like is something we all really have. Um, researchers have basically isolated that certain um, alkaloids in chocolate um, may raise the levels of serotonin in the brain. So these studies have speculated that cravings for chocolate may have a biological basis with serotonin deficiency being one factor. So like I said, it's like when you break up with your boyfriend and your girlfriend and you like want a bucket of ice cream or like you want to go to the store and you want to pick like 10 of your favorite chocolate bars. Like we have that craving for that comfort food and it's actually because of the serotonin. So in some cases, feeling like you need chocolate might indicate that you're not getting enough magnesium in your diet as well, which we do know magnesium you can take by the supplement. You can get magnesium through your diet. But although chocolate, and particularly dark chocolate, does contain some magnesium, um, nuts, legumes also contain magnesium, and they don't have as much sugar and are generally more satisfying in the long run. As much as we crave chocolate and we want it like that second you know, it's not as, sometimes it's not as fulfilling as we really want. I've, I've heard, you know, when it comes to food craving, I heard this from a, um, who did I hear this from? I think it was just another, from another podcast, but they, they were talking about food cravings and people give into their food cravings, which I, I give into my food cravings all the time. But when you think of a food craving, it's okay. Do you really need that entire chocolate bar? Is that what you're craving is like that like filling your stomach with the entire chocolate bar or are you craving the moment of delight when you eat the chocolate bar right it's it's the mouth it's like the the moment of delight in your mouth when you're eating it right it's not the feeling of it being in your stomach it's you eat like the concept of it being in your mouth that moment of delight of having that chocolate i know that sounds really weird but to me like that made so much sense like i'm only craving the mouth delight that it gives me. I'm not craving, you know, there's nothing worse than actually, in my opinion, there is nothing worse than like filling up on a bunch of junk because you just feel lousy. You just feel like crap. Like you just don't feel good. It feels good in the moment when you're stuffing your face with potato chips and chocolate because it's, you get that moment of mouth delight, but it's not the, it's not the feeling of actually being full from those cravings, right? So we give in to the mouth delight, not really the concept of the chocolate bar or the bag of potato chips, okay? So <laughs> there you have it. There is a, those connections between depression and cravings and chocolate specifically. It is all because of our, like, our gastrial um, track and our serotonin levels, those neurotransmitters that we need, those mood regulators, right? It's so, so important. So the next time that you are really craving something or if you find that you're in a pattern of craving something, you really got to think about, you know, how are you feeling mentally? So with that being said, it's time for a little bit of a break. But when we get back, I'm now going to jump into coping with our food cravings. I have lots of tips to share with you of how we can try to cope with these, how we can kind of find a better system for ourselves to to not give into these cravings all the time and to actually fix the root of the problem, which is our mental health. So I will be right back. Do not go anywhere. Lots more information to share with you. Stay tuned. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Hello, hello. We are back on the last stretch of today's episode. My name's Alyssa Joe. in case you forgot. Um, we're talking all about food cravings, how it is so closely related to our mental health. Um, I went through, you know, how serotonin and the way that we feel our bodies, our gestational tract, all of these things play such a crucial role um, in our cravings, in our mental health, how we're feeling, our moods, all those things. So now let's talk about um, how we can cope with these food cravings due to our mental health. Um, now, you know, like I said before the break, it's that moment of delight within your mouth that you crave, right? It, it's truly what it is. It's not that feeling of being full from the chocolate bar. It's that moment of delight in your mouth that you get. So we might feel better in the moment if we are overindulging in our sweets, um, you know, to help cope with our stress or just our emotions. Um, and of course, the long there's long-term physical consequences to always giving into your cravings, right? Like the physical of it, the, the gain, like the weight gain. But there are also a lot of emotional consequences, of course, as well. So over time, a very high sugar diet may worsen your symptoms of depression, like I said, right? Especially if you tend to feel guilty, um, too, about giving in um, to your cravings. So there are definitely things that we can talk about to help kind of cope with these things. And, you know, there are some ways that we can learn to cope, not only with the cravings, but with what's causing them. And I always strongly believe we need to find what's like the root of the problem or else it's always going to keep happening. So it's really important to address what's driving you to reach for that cookie. Um, when you're upset, you can also better, you know, take care of your body and your mind, right? When you're in a better headspace. So my first thing that I'm going to tell, share with you is that if you find that you are really becoming an emotional eater, you really find that you're, you're, you're eating a lot or you're giving into your cravings a lot and it's really bothering you, I would suggest keeping a food diary. And this means that you just pay attention to basically everything that you're eating. You write things down. And now it's not just like, going onto like a fitness pal app on your phone and like tracking your calories like it's not really the reason behind I think keeping a food diary is important I just find that we are able to track kind of when you know we're feeling a certain way and then what we crave and so I really like to keep a food diary for the sense of okay I went in and I grabbed um a bagel or something I was craving carbs say and and I write down okay I ate a bagel at this time and then I don't just write down like what I ate at that time, but I, I write down like what I was feeling or like the scenario I was in. So like maybe I was really stressed out about work. So then I started craving carbs. Okay. And so then, so then you start writing this down. So not just the food that you're eating, but also kind of the way that you're feeling in that moment and whatever the situation is around you. Maybe you're just feeling good and you're just craving a chocolate bar. Write that down. It's totally fine. But I think you should write the date, the time, the food, and like what you were feeling. Um, and if you have this, this diary or this journal that you keep for a little while, after even like a week or two weeks, you'll start to notice patterns. Okay. And you'll start to notice, okay, I, I go for sweets when I'm feeling this way, or I go for carbs when I'm feeling this way, or I give into my cravings in this situation, like certain things like that. Um, and then you start to find that, that pattern and then you can learn your triggers and then you can avoid those triggers. Um, another one, of course, is to just always um, get active and start eating well. And if you, I find a lot of people that give into their cravings, they feel like, oh, I just already fell off so off track. I might as well just keep eating all this junk. But then that affects your mental health. You're not getting the right neurotransmitters and the, like all your hormones are messed up and all these different things play a role. So if you're working on, you know, finding new activities to kind of replace your snacking, to replace those cravings, get active, get moving. We actually have more energy when we are moving around a lot. And of course, when we are eating properly, so hydrate, drink lots of water. Um, a trick that I do too with my cravings is I, if I'm craving something, I make myself drink a cup of water. And then if I'm still craving it, I'll wait like 10 minutes. If I'm still craving it, I'll drink another cup of water. And then like within like a 30, like 40 minute time range, if I've had a couple cups of like a couple glasses of water and I'm still craving it, then I'll like, I'll let myself have it because like my body, like my mind, I really, really want it. But a lot of the times after those two glasses of water and 30 to 40 minutes go by, I'm no longer craving it. So I find like that works for me, but you also have to find what works for you. And by keeping a food diary and keeping, you know, writing down your emotions and stuff, you'll learn those patterns and what will work for you. Um, of course, practicing mindfulness and moderation. So similar to how your minds, you know, your mind might think that you're hungry, 
when you're actually maybe just thirsty. So the meaning of a particular craving may be more complex than it seems. And so this is where, of course, practicing that mindfulness can be really helpful. Sugar cravings are amplified and they're most intense when we are hungry. So if you go too long without a meal or a snack, your body is likely to start looking for a quick source of energy, right? And so this might address your hunger now, but you aren't likely to feel satisfied, right? You you get that mouth delight, but you don't get that feeling of satis- satisfaction within your like from being filled by that. So sugar and fat stimulate hunger and it's making it more likely that you'll end up eating beyond the need to satisfy your craving um, if you reach for these foods. So when you're truly hungry, you got to try to reach for nutritious foods that will address your hunger and provide your body with that energy that it needs and your brain with that fuel that it needs. And then if you still want dessert afterwards, then go for that craving, then go for that. And then if you're having a balanced meal, right? So you can have a balanced meal with your, your veggies, fruit, protein whatever carbs all those things then if you're still you know wanting that that sugary dessert then have give yourself a small taste of it so basically avoid completely depriving yourself and don't beat yourself up if you give in that's a huge thing which can lead to a lot more mental health problems because we tend to give into these things and then we we beat ourselves up about it for so long afterwards and then we fall into that like vicious cycle of like i already did it once i might as well just like keep going so for example, like choose a small serving of like a dark, a dark chocolate mousse instead of like a chocolate bar. And like you can do like substitutes of like a dark chocolate like avocado mousse, which like tastes really similar, but like it's it's healthier for you, right? So it's healthier fats. Or like allow yourself the dessert you really want, but only have like one small portion. Like don't let yourself overindulge with it, which is of course easier said than done. But mindful eating really helps you plan meals and snack intentionally. This is why I also think meal prepping is super important. If you go into your day knowing exactly what you're going to eat and you even plan, okay, yeah, I'm going to have half of a dark chocolate bar. You'll, you're basically like fulfilling your craving before it even happens because like your brain is already knowing, oh yeah, I get like half that dark chocolate bar at lunch today like on my break or whatever so those are a few tips another one you know is just remembering a craving is not an emergency um especially if you're feeling really emotional and stuff like that that might feel like your go-to thing but if you're feeling emotional you're feeling depressed you're feeling sad anything like this try to go to some of your other coping mechanisms right if you like to journal right if you like to go for a walk or get some exercise if you like to call up a friend um maybe you like to do some sewing or some some knitting maybe you like to play board games like maybe those help you get out of your head try to do some of your other other coping mechanisms before you start to go to your coping mechanism of food because it, it's inevitable it happens but um, cravings fizzle and they pass and if you're able to cope with your stress and anxiety and emotions within your other coping mechanisms you're going to feel a lot better about yourself in the long run um, another is to just give yourself some time to delay I know like some cravings are just kind of like a firecracker like it's a quick pop and then they just like dissolve right and so but others are kind of like a slow burn sometimes you know you kind of smolder on it for hours and even days if you don't fulfill it so to deal with this kind of like firecracker variety to just tell yourself that you can have those salt and vinegar potato chips in half an hour and this is like the same as me drinking two glasses of water waiting 30 40 minutes and then like if I still want it like I'll let myself have it um so yeah, try to give yourself some time, delay yourself from having those cravings. Um, this is a pretty cool study that I found. A 2008 study found that when women try to suppress their thoughts about chocolate, they actually end up eating 50% more than those who were encouraged to think and talk about it. And then for men, the response was completely different. So those who thought and talked about the chocolate, the response was different um sorry so those who thought and talked about the chocolate ended up eating more than those who suppressed so basically ladies talk about your chocolate men keep it to yourself and that'll help your your cravings I guess and then another thing is just like don't try to substitute like yeah there's like a difference between like having a dark chocolate avocado mousse and just like a, a chocolate mousse that's okay but I mean like if you're craving a cookie and you eat a carrot, like you're never going to fulfill yourself. You're never going to get that like moment of delight within like your mouth moment of delight or that fulfillment inside your stomach. 
So really try to find, um, just, just don't try to substitute, you know, do your other coping mechanisms, wait your 30 minutes, drink your water, um, eat new, like nutrient dense foods, but just never try to substitute it for something else because later on you're going to end up binging or overindulging even more than if you just gave into that craving. So cravings, mental health, food, you know, it's all strongly related. And the biggest thing that I can give to you is that food diary. I think that does wonders to really keep yourself on track with your cravings and your mental health, but as well, just trying to be mindful and consciously do your other coping mechanisms before you try to give into food. Easier said than done. I know it takes practice. It's, you know, not like it, it takes some time to really develop these qualities, but I know that you can do it, and I know that um, once you also discover your triggers and, di- and discover, you know, why you're kind of feeling a certain way when you're eating a certain food or why you grab a certain food at a certain time, once you really understand that about yourself, it makes it a lot easier to kind of set yourself up for a plan and to start meal prepping and start organizing your day and, you know we're not living to eat, right? Like food fuels us and it helps us live, right? So we really got to make sure that we're fueling our brains and our bodies with the proper nutrients that it needs. All right. Well, that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. I so appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button to like and follow us on social media. I update those regularly. I got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I post pictures, tweets, all those things. So head over there, give us a follow and a like. And then as well, do not forget to leave a five-star review. It actually only takes a few seconds. Um, Just click your button, add a little comment. It makes my day and it really helps out as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to sharing more information with you on how to live your life to the happiest and the fullest. I hope today's episode was helpful. I hope it was kind of motivational to get on track with your relationship with food because I think it's so important for our mental health. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Till next time. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find the show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast.